Look, we think we're all so smart making smart cars and all these tiny cars are theater parts. It was done a long time ago. Yes, it's got four seats. Um, I was told that it makes friends everywhere it goes. And Alex also told me that it's not very good for courting because you can't fit your girlfriend in the back, apparently. Well, ladies and gentlemen, how sweet. It deserves a round of applause. It makes me smile every time I see it. Thank you, Max. And the judges loved it so much as well. This has got an honorable mention. Congratulations, guys. Really well deserved. Thank you. Next, the 1929 Rolls Royce 20 horsepower. This is a three position cabriolet that you're going to see come up here. There it is. Coming, coming, coming. Um, well, when it does come, <laughs> you, can, uh, you can have a look. This car was actually built for a lady. It was the wife of the Attorney General. And what I do like is that the Attorney General was, guess who? Churchill's best friend. And if I'm not mistaken, he was here a lot. So I'm going too far as to say that in 1929, this 20 horsepower Rolls Royce was probably here already. So I thought that was a quite a cute little story. It's not its first time. It's its first time at Salon Privé, but not its first time at uh, Blenheim. You know, you say that uh, old cars, are they reliable? Can you drive them? Well, the other nice anecdote uh, is that David drove the car here and he drove 130 miles to Salon Privé to show his car. He did the tour and guess what? He'll be driving 130 miles back. 20 horsepower cars, 20 horse uh, Rolls Royces are known to be very, very reliable. As a matter of fact, he said to me, are you surprised? The car has 107,000 miles and it's still on its original engine. That is Rolls Royce engineering for you at its best. Thank you very much for bringing the uh, 20 horse uh, three position uh, cabriolet back to Blenheim Palace. Nineteen thirty-one Bentley eight liter. I mean, the eight liter was the top of the line from Bentley. This is a saloon by Freestone and Webb. It's a one-off uh, uh, creation. It's a one-off uh, body, and it was uh, a car that was designed to impress from the first uh, day. It was uh, ordered, and it's mentioned in the documentation for this car that it was a special Concorde d'Elegance uh, body. So. Already at the time, you must know that in the 1930s, Concorde Elegance was quite a popular thing. You would have a car coach built, every car was different, and uh, you would be able to show your car at the Concours. It was donated to the war, to the cause, and, and we thought it was lost, blown up, but actually it wasn't, it was hidden away. Whoever had the car thought it was too good to risk during the war. It's very, very original. I was reliably told there was one small change. Originally, it was uh, Mocha over Mocha. And maybe that's a bit daring today, so we'll stick to the black paint that you see here in front of you. Thank you, Max. From the pre-war clothes class, it is the winner here at Salon Prevenue class. Congratulations, guys. Big round of applause, please. <laughs> Johnny Shears of the Wheel, a well-deserved best in class. Well done, Johnny. I say well done, I should say well done, Bentley. It's not you, it's the car. <laughs> <laughs> right then, the post-war closed cars, and this is something that's very close to my heart because it's Italian, because uh, it is a Fiat, but it's a very, very special Fiat. And the Fiat 8V. This is the Berlinetta Vignale, and uh, what a little Berlinetta this is. The Fiat made the car called Otto V. What does that mean? 8V. Well, why is that? Well, because it has a Fiat 8-cylinder engine, which is an V, a 2-liter 8-cylinder, and they were going to call it a V8. However, as you know, the American companies had patented that name before, so they had to inverse it. So they call it an Otto V instead of a 8V, instead of a V8. This is a racing car. It was designed to go and racing and compete, and you see the numbers on the door, 400 and 31. Well, that was because the car did the uh, Mille Miglia. And if you're asking how do they do the numbers on the Mille Miglia, you know, there was hundreds of cars that would take part in this thousand mile race across Italy. Well, 
The 431 was the time the car started on the race. The car would do the thousand mile, they would see what time it came back to Brescia, and that's how they would calculate uh, the times on the Mille Miglia. An exquisite Vignale body car. Take a look at all the chrome details, the bumpers right up against the uh, body. It is a typical Vignale Italian coach-built Fiat. Thank you, Max, and a massive firm favourite of mine as well, the Fisa V Berlinetta. Paul, congratulations. Thank you for winning a class winner here at Salon Privé. Well done. Thank you. Okay, so you don't scratch your car with your big trunk. You see the door handles, how they pack up inside, and Vignale was well known for being quite flamboyant. You see so much chrome finishes and so much chrome on the car. This is really a typical signature of uh, Vignale, all of the, uh, the chrome. Post-war clothes, well, now we've got something special. A Barcoe's restoration, but what a restoration that has been completed on this 1964 Alfa Romeo Giulia Sprint Speciale. Uh, I don't think there is a Giulia SS, as it's known, in better condition, has been restored into higher uh, standard than uh, this car. It is absolutely unbelievable. You could have at the time a Bertone body car, a Pininfarina body car, a Zagato. Well, this is Bertone's uh, answer on the little uh, Giulia, the Sprint Speciale. And I think we need to uh, have a quick mention to you because this is your first car in the first concourse. So, ladies and gentlemen, Sheena is here. In her, in her car for the first time in uh, the Salon Privé. So congratulations, your car is absolutely stunning. Well, if you're talking about post-war clothes, how can you not have a Ferrari in the lineup? This is a 275 GTB. A very special 275 GTB as uh, it was born as a six carburetor car and I know you like six carburetors don't you? Um, right hand drive, very rare of course, uh, delivered via Maranello concessionaires and I'll teach you a little trick to know about when a car has an aluminium body or I should say a 275 has an alloy body. If you can see here it's got the rain gutter. Well because of the way an alloy body is constructed when they build these cars, the rain gutter had to go all the way to the bottom and there's a, let's say, a crack, a crease in the, uh, uh, behind the end of the rain gutter. If it wasn't aluminium, then it wouldn't have that. So that's a quick giveaway as to how you can tell a 275 has an alloy body. So a six car, right hand drive, the lines on a 275 to me is one of the most beautiful Ferraris that was ever built and it's on my wish list for sure and probably yours as well. It is indeed, Max. One of the best rears I think in the whole automotive industry, it is quite an incredible car, beautiful restoration, and the honourable mention goes to the 275 GTB. Congratulations. Quick photo, and then we're going to send you off. I mean, just look at the lines of a 275. 12 cylinders, French engine. Five-speed gearbox, all independent suspension, transaxle in the rear. It really is the ultimate road-going Ferrari. I know there's Ferraris that cost more money, but certainly that cam tail, that rear end, those hips, and how they come out, the covered headlamps, the long nose, it just takes all the boxes. This is going to be a classic forever. Class F now, we're rattling through uh, all the classes. Jaguar XK120, 3.4 liter competition roadster. So if you wonder what it was like racing an XK120, and by the way, Jaguar XK120, not to bore you, but I'm sure you all know why it's called an XK120, because the XK was capable of 120 miles per hour. So hence the name XK120. Well, 3.4 liter, and if you ever wonder what someone what an XK120 competition car would look like in 1952. Well, this is exactly what it uh, would look like. The small aero screens, the outside uh, fuel filler. You see they've removed the bumpers as well. This is an exact sort of re reproduction, exact, exact specification of what a racing XK, competition XK120 would have been in 1952 in America or in England for that fact. That 
is an exciting car to drive, especially with those little aero screens. Thank you very much for bringing the uh, 120 along. Looks magnificent. Love the dull pink work as well. You ask if people use cars, well I can tell you that they do. This car was uh, racing at, uh, or is going to be racing at Goodwood. It's a car that you always, always, always see racing. This is a uh, Alfa Romeo 6C 3000 uh, PR, the Disco Volante. One of Touring's best designs when it came to uh, Alfa Romeo. And, and a car that had some uh, definite sense of great success in racing, but also had some tough times. In 1954, it was uh, racing in Monza, the Super Corte Maggiore Grand Prix. And there's one Achilles heel with the uh, 60 3000 well it was the steering it came from the 1900 road car and unfortunately it did have quite a moment at the time it was virtually written off but luckily Colin Crabb was able to find all the remaining the um, goings before we all know they have the going doors and I'll go into the diesel of that, but this car is really special. There are quite a few Goldwings, I must admit. However, this car is one of the very few Goldwings that were actually used for competition. Um, you have to realize this was the fastest production car when it came out at the time, and there's only about four cars that were actually used by the factory for competition, and this car was used in the European Rally Championship, and uh, it did Rally Sestier in Turin, Italy. And guess what? First outing, and it won. So there's only one or two competition goal wings that are out in uh, private hands, and here you have one of them. Higher power, better suspension. It was tuned by the factory, and check out those Rudge wheels. Lightweight competition wheels. One center bolt to hold the wheel on. Thank you, Max. And uh, Danny, I did say it'd be worth bringing it. You've won your class here in the Goldman class at Salon Privé. Congratulations, guys. You know, Galway is just a nickname for these uh, cars because, of course, of the doors. And the go doors, what does that give It's because the chassis is a tubular chassis. It actually comes up quite high on the sill. So, at the time, they couldn't make a normal door that would open. Hence, the solution of the Galway doors. Thank you very much, Danny. Fly away. Well done and congratulations. A competition 300 SL. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we have something... We have something very special here for you. We've got the Ferrari 125S, driven by none other than Andrea Modena. I think a round of applause for this car. And I'm going to abuse Andrea's time. And I wonder if I can ask him a few questions. Because ladies and gentlemen, this is where the car with which Ferrari started. Can, can I bother you for a few words? This is, ciao, tutto bene? Molto bene. Molto bene. Ci possiamo parlare italiano. We might have a quick initial Italian, you guys don't mind, do you? This is the car, this is a piece of history. This is where Ferrari started. This is this is the starting point. This is it. This is Ferrari. People don't realize. Uh, no, I think that people realize, uh, to be honest. And uh, uh, also just entering the car, uh, you feel a bit uh, something unique. Uh, you feel being part of the story. Part of a 75 of uh, a dream uh, that, uh, of course, uh, we work to last uh, 75 and 75 and 75 forever. Uh, and a dream of a man, a visionary man, that uh, starting from this car, developed what he has been done, what he has been able to do with, uh, under his name. Which is unbelievable. And one of the great things that I like to hear that you're saying that, you know, you have this car and it's the dream, but you're also very attentive to your history. For you at Ferrari, and you, you, you know, I'm sure you've all heard of Ferrari Classiche, but it's a big part of your story now, isn't it? Looking after these old girls, shall I call them that? <laughs> Absolutely, yes, thank you. Thank you, Mac. Uh, yes, uh, uh, the, the idea to keep our heritage, to preserve our heritage in its authenticity is uh, one of the most important goals of Ferrari Classiche, of Ferrari 
uh, all uh, because uh, we truly believe that uh, looking forward, looking to the future, you have to be uh, to know where are you coming from, what is your past, and stay strict to your past uh, and to your story. That I think is great news, and to, to see how many cars here, how many, you must be so pleased. How many Ferraris that are here, and they've been restored by you at the factory at Ferrari Classica. So congratulations! And keep it up because we need to keep all these cars on the road. They're so important. They're so beautiful. That's the, the main idea, to have the cars going on the road, being enjoyed by their owners and being enjoyed by people that can look at them and dream at that. Bravi, 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 bravi e grazie. Bravi. Grazie, Max. Ci vediamo presto. Grazie per aver portato la macchina. Sorry, thank you very much for having brought this car. Am I ready? I'm ready. Are you ready? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> the car is never used to having stopped, so, ah, look at that. It's a Ferrari, of course it's going to start. <laughs> Bravi e grazie ancora di aver portato la macchina. Thank you again to Andrea uh, to brought the car all the way from uh, Maranello, Italy, here for us to enjoy the beginning of uh, the Ferrari story. And here, speaking of beginning, we've got a 250 Europa Coupe by Pinin Farina. The 250 nomenclature is... Uh, where it started producing Grand Touring cars. This is one of the first uh, Grand Touring Ferraris. I don't want to bore you, but I'm sure you all know that this is a V12 engine, and the 250 stands for the size of each piston. So to get the how the engine size of a Ferrari 250 is very easy. You do 250 times 12, because we have 12 uh, cylinders, and there you get to 3,000, which is the size of the uh, engine. This is a... Uh, Pinin Farina design, again Ferrari would entrust uh, other coach builders to uh, build and design their cars and one of the interesting features that's uh, very rare that on the front bonnet here you've got the Ferrari and the Pinin Farina flags uh, on uh, the bonnet. Low roof, uh, look at the white coach line that goes uh, all around the car. Uh, a car that was, when it was new, was shown at concours but also the first owner did rallies with the car because not only were these 50s Ferraris beautiful, but they also had great engine and a lot, a lot of uh, power. The Europa Coupe by Pini Farina. Thank you for bringing the car along. Nineteen fifty-six Ferrari two fifty. We call it TDF for Tour de France, but it's a two fifty GT Competizione. Now again, you can have different body styles, and this is a Berlinetta, which means a coupe, a two-seater uh, coupe, a Berlinetta Zagato, because it was designed by none other than Zagato, and you can see it in the styling cues. You can see that double bubble um, uh, roof. And you can see how it's, Zagato was known for building lightweight cars. You saw the Vignale Fiat earlier on and it had a lot of chrome and it was very elaborate and very uh, luxurious. Whereas this was all about racing and lightweight. And this is an extremely rare car, probably one of the most beautiful and purposeful Ferrari 250s uh, in existence. Of course with that V12 and the first owner of this car did a lot, a lot, a lot of racing. And in the history file I was showed today, they even have the driving license and race license of the very first owner of this car in the 56 and 57 season. The Ferrari TDF Berlinetta Zagato. Thank you, Max. And this, ladies and gentlemen, was the most single toughest cars for the judges to judge. When you look at the lineup of Ferraris here celebrating Ferrari's 75 years at the helm of the automotive industry, this is incredible. No surprise, guys, this has won the class win here in the Ferrari 75th anniversary road class. Well done. What is great is that it comes uh, to us here at Salon Privé all the way from the United States of America for the collection of none other than uh, David Sidorio. And he's probably got one of the best Zagato collections in the world. It is uh, truly, truly unbelievable. From Ferraris to Alfa Romeos, uh, uh, David is very kind to bring us uh, the car all the way from America here to Salon Privé. I'm going to show my age and uh, I remember in my previous life when I was working in the auction world having that car for sale and I can tell you that was 1998. 
in a Gestar auction. Gosh, how time flies. It still looks as good though. Actually, better now. Ferrari, Ferrari, Ferrari. Uh, the 250 GT Passo Corto California Spider. The short wheelbase California Spider. I think one of the ultimate open top Ferrari road cars in the world, bar none. Uh, made famous by, or sorry, even more famous by, you'll all remember, uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. But this is, uh, this is way beyond that. This is uh, the best specification California Spider, uh, short wheelbase, covered headlamp, and might I add, the only right-hand drive car in existence. It delivered you to a young Italian racing driver that believed that all cars had to be right-hand drive because of the way the circuits were uh, going. Uh, and then sold in 1967 for um, <laughs> probably not very much money to Dennis uh, De Ferranti, who kept it uh, until 2013, until uh, our friend Tom Hartley Jr. was able to unearth the car and sell it to the current owner. The only right-hand drive Ferrari California Spider with covered headlamps. Wow, this is really one of the ultimate road-going Ferraris in existence, bar none, and also one of the most valuable Ferraris in the world. Congratulations on your car. Thank you. We saw the 275 GTB. Coming up here, you've got a 275 GTS. Uh, very similar mechanically to the 275 GTB. The 275 GTB was uh, constructed by Scaglietti, where actually the more luxurious and much more refined uh, 275 GTS was uh, constructed by Pininfarina in uh, Grugliasco, a uh, factory outside of uh, Turin. Completely different from the 275 GTB, as you can say, uh, as you can see. This was uh, the touring car, still got that 12-cylinder engine, but of course uh, the top can go down on this car. Uh, it was all about luxury driving. Uh, only 200 of these cars were ever made at the time. Fully restored by uh, Joe Macari and resplendent in black. This is a 275 GTS. Thank you very much for being the car. Well, I said the California Spider was the or one of the best, or the most important uh, road-going open Ferraris in the world. Well, this is just as good, if not better. Again, all the way from America, the 275 uh, uh, GTS4 Nart Spider by Scaglietti. It was uh, Canetti, the importer for Ferrari in America, that uh, had the brilliant idea to make an open-top 275 GTB4. He convinced Enzo Ferrari that if he was to make an open Ferrari like this one, he would be able to sell it. Well, only 10 of these cars were ever made, uh, and they were called Nart Spiders because it was Canetti that had them commissioned, and Nart for the North American racing team. He was the owner of the Nart Spider. Uh, this is one of the only two alloy cars, and uh, I mean, it's just sublime. This is it. This is the car that you'd want to be driving on the road. It's got the looks of a 275, but you can pull the top down and extremely rare as well. Thanks, Max. One of the coolest cars on the lawn. Thank you so much to John for bringing it over here as well. Richard and Merle in the passenger seat. This was, as you guys know, the toughest class to judge barn on. Between this and the TDF Zagato, it's just impossible. But guys, we're really honored to give you the honorable mention in the 75 years of Ferrari class. Well done, thank you. Congratulations to the uh, 275 NART Spider again, a car that was shipped over all the way from uh, America from the uh, collection of uh, John Shirley. Lusso. Lusso in Italian stands for easy luxury. Well, there was the 250 GT show wheelbase, Passo Corto, which is the competition variant, and then there was the Lusso, which is the luxury variant. So, same 250 engine, same chassis but a more spacious interior and slightly softer suspension and a completely different uh, body design. This is a Pininfarina uh, car and built by Scaglietti at uh, their uh, factory. Um, fully, fully, fully restored. And to me, it's got the best curves. Look at that cam tail on the back. And if you have time, have a look at the dashboard, have a look at the interior, because you'll see that the speedometer and the rev counter are absolutely in the smack bang center of the car. So 
probably not the best thing if you have a nervous passenger because you'll see quite how fast uh, the uh, Lusso can go. Thank you very much. Uh, owned by none other than JK and I think one of the cars that he's had in the collection for the longest time. Thank you, gentlemen. Expertly restored again by Barkaways. The restorations that they do on these Ferraris are simply phenomenal. To survive at GTB, we have the short nose uh, uh, version coming up. So the earlier 1965, there was a two cam and a four cam variant. This is uh, the two cam uh, uh, variant. Again, a car, right hand drive and delivered with six carburetors. Seems like it's quite common these days. Well, the 275, as I said, one of the best looking cars, La Dolce Vita at its uh, best. To me, it's a car that when you look at it, it just shows speed. It just looks like it's going very fast. And I can tell you personally that a 275 as a car to drive is a shared delight. You still have that gated uh, Ferrari uh, gear change and the noise, the sound, the music that comes from the engine is quite something on a 275. Thank you, Max. An absolute firm favourite of mine. Six car factory original, as you say. Right hand drive, super rare. And you guys have won the honourable mention here at Salon Privé. Congratulations. Well done, guys. Congratulations. Well deserved. The restoration of these cars. As I said, guys that restore the cars and the owners as well credit because it is not a easy thing to do to get to this level of perfection on these cars it's hours of research and days and days of uh, hard work to get to this level look at that cam tail those exhausts hanging the answer exhaust hanging off the back the barani wire wheels i mean it ticks all the boxes you're looking lovingly as it leaves ferrari 330 gtc coming up well, after the 275, there was the 275, of course, there was uh, the 330 GT 2 plus 2, which is a uh, four-seater, uh, but they had to come up with a car to fill the gap, a two-seater sporty car. Well, this is what was after the 275 uh, GTV, a four-liter, 300 horsepower V12. And you can see it's much more of a touring car. This is a, a much more comfortable and spacious car uh, to be in compared to the uh, 275. I do want to talk about the color of uh, Verde Chiaro, uh, light green, which I think is absolutely sublime. As a matter of fact, I should know, but I don't know. I've never seen one in this color. Is there another one in this color? Probably not. No? Well, there we go. I was right, you see. The only one in uh, Verde Chiaro. Absolutely magnificent. Thank you, Max. And Christy, don't go anywhere. We are delighted that you have won with your beautifully new resort, 330 GTC, the best in class. So congratulations Hooray! to you. <laughs> Christy has gone through a fair few years of painstaking restoration for this car. This is the first time the 330 GTC has been present at a concourse since its restoration. Delighted you guys are going away with the award. Well done. Well done, well done, well deserved. I can hear the shrieks of happiness from the uh, car, it's always a nice uh, thing to see. No drinking and driving, give the champagne back to your co-driver. <laughs> Lots of smiles. Uh, coming up next, talk about rare Ferraris, rare open top Ferrari road cars. Well, you thought the California Spider, the 250 California Spider was rare. Got something which is even more rare. I've got coming up here the 1967 Ferrari 365 California Spider by Benin Farina. There are only 14 of these cars ever produced, two of which are in right hand drive form. And uh, Tom was showing me the uh, paperwork on this car, and I thought there was some nice little anecdotes. It was originally ordered in uh, Rolls-Royce Regal Red. How about that for a Ferrari? I don't know whether it was Enzo Ferrari that said no way, or if the owner had second thoughts, but as you can see, it was then delivered in a much more, uh, let's say, calm and sober blue Sera. Uh, how is that for a change? Imagine this Ferrari in uh, uh, Rolls-Royce uh, Regal Red. One of two right-hand drive cars. The other car has been lost or hasn't been seen for years and years and years. Uh, and what I love about this as well, that this car was actually shown at Pebble Beach. 
and the owner, after Pebble Beach, he got in the car, he did the Concorde, and he drove almost a thousand miles down the coast to LA and back. So you see the cars, yes, they do Concours, but they're also driven. Thank you very much for bringing the 365 uh, California, expertly driven, well done. Uh, I think I'm going to call Andrew Bagley here to, uh, where's that? Oh, hello, to talk about this car. No? You don't want to talk about this car? Nothing to do with me, Max. Nothing, Nothing to do with you. Okay, I just, I just know you know Dino's very well. Hot 206, I mean, that's a pretty distinct number plate, you would remember that. 206 uh, GT Berlinetta, quite an emotional story behind the name uh, Dino. Uh, Alfredo, as, oh, hello. <laughs> Alfredo uh, was actually the name of uh, Enzo Ferrari's son, and he died at the age of just uh, 24. But he was, uh, uh, let's say, he was known to have designed the very first V6 one and a half liter uh, engine. And so uh, Enzo Ferrari, in his honor, uh, branded uh, the cars with the V6 engine, uh, the Dino. Actually, a completely separate brand from Ferrari. We call them Ferrari Dinos today, but it should be just uh, named uh, a Dino. A Leonardo Fioravanti design. It is magnificent and I have to add, this is even rarer being the 206 Dino, so the very, very first version with the alloy uh, alloy uh, body, with the center lock wheels, the wooden steering wheel. I'll go on and on and on, but I won't take up too much of your time. Thank you, Max. And um, there is a little bit of a story, which is my Max being a little bit cheeky with me, but um, this is my car, my wife's car, Sarah, driving it with Edward, my son, in the passenger seat. Um, you know, my brother and I, David, have been car nuts for years and years, and decades, literally. Um, I indulged myself a fair few years ago with this beautiful Dino 206. It came from Italy in boxes and bags and bits, and Ian Barkway's over there in the white jacket, give us a wave in. Painstaking restoration, three and a half years it took to get to this car back to the state you see it now. Oro Chiaro Metalizzato. It has not been judged today. There's no way I could give myself an award, if it judges would have bestowed it with one, of course. Clearly I was going to say, no way I could have given myself an award. You're quite confident, aren't you? Just because you run the shop doesn't mean you would win. <laughs> no, I was super, super proud, as was Ian, to take this to Venedeste Concorso d'Eleganza back in May of this year on the Lake Como, the shores there, and present the car, where again, Maxig won absolutely nothing. <laughs> but I was up against the TDF Zagato that you've just seen go through about 10 cars ago, but it's great to have it here at Salon Privé. Um, it's my favorite car. Oh. Sarah Bagley. <laughs> Thank you very much for bringing it along. Thank you. <laughs> As you can see, uh, Salon Privé is very much a family affair. Speaking of uh, family affairs, well, this is the most beautiful Q08 uh, GTS you will ever, 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 ever see in your life. This is a full-blown Barkaway's restoration. No one would ever do a restoration like this. And uh, who's driving? None other than Ben Barkaway, one of our judges. What do you know? And Ben, what did you do in this car not so long ago? This was the wedding car. Oh, isn't that sweet? A round of applause for Ben. He got married in this 308. How long has it been in the family? Apparently, longer than that, because there's pictures of you in your pajamas, maybe even in your underwear, when you're a little boy standing next to this car. And then he got married into it. A full Barkaway's restoration, owned by the family, no expense spared, a magnificent uh, 308 uh, GTS. 20 years of the same ownership. Thank you very much, Ben. Thank you. 1957 Ferrari uh, 250 GT Spider Competizione by Penelverina. This is actually a Kia Spider Series 1. Hello. How nice to see you. Kia Spider Series 1, which was uh, ordered you by Belgian racing driver, Leon Bernier. And uh, he fancied himself as a bit of a sporty kind of guy. So he ordered it specially with this cool wraparound windscreen. Normally it would have a normal windscreen. The headrest behind, uh, um, behind the car. Uh, it was one of the first cars that apparently, legend has it, he actually uh, went to Pininfarina and had the works done with Jacques Swatters, who was the Ferrari importer, one of the biggest uh, names in Ferrari history for uh, uh, Belgium. And they had this car 
uh, constructed especially for him as a one-off, uh, we like to call it a cafe racer, a competizione Ferrari PF uh, Spider. A unique car and the only one built to this uh, specification. Thank you very much. Ferrari 250, you saw the uh, 250 Lusso, which was the luxury variant. This is the 250 GT Competizione. So this is the competition version of uh, the Lusso. I mean, you can already hear the growl from that uh, engine is uh, quite a lot meaner than uh, the uh, Lusso. The lightweight body, the body was much, much lighter than uh, the Lusso. And this car is really special because this car actually won the Tour de France, uh, the Tour de France winner, uh, overall winner for this uh, Ferrari, this competition Ferrari. CPAC, Harrod, so lightweight alloy body, more powerful uh, uh, engine, lower suspension. Look at the all the competition features like the outside fuel filler. I had luck of uh, following one of these cars on Monday, actually, on a windy road, and I can tell you, watching the rear end of a Ferrari short wheelbase on a windy road is one of the most beautiful things that you will ever see on the road today. As a matter of fact, one of the most beautiful things you'll ever, ever see. Congratulations on the competition sore wheelbase, Berlinetta Basso Corto. I have to say, it just gets better and better and better here. Just when you've had a 2759 Spider, a California Spider, a 365 uh, um, uh, California Spider, then put, <laughs> do the Bagley brothers bring up here, a Ferrari 250 GTO. The most valuable Ferrari uh, in the world is right here in front of you. Gran Turismo Homologazione. The car that was built to go and win against everyone, and when it did, this is a car that won at uh, Le Mans, the GTO did, and this actual car uh, competed and came first in class uh, at the 12 hours of Sebring and the third in class of course at uh, GTO, one of the very early 250 GTOs and as you all know, the most collectible, the most valuable, those three letters mean the world in uh, Ferrari. It is the ultimate road going competition Ferrari. There is absolutely nothing better and nothing more valuable. Not at all, Max, and we're delighted, and thank you very much, Andy Gill and Joe McCarry, for bringing the GTO and many other cars here to Salon Privé. Please give Joe our best, and here is your reward, the honourable mention, in the race class. Congratulations, guys. Thank you, Andy. Five speed uh, gearbox gave him really the edge over all the other cars in town. Look at the shape of that GTO. Oh, so good.